Hi guys, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be doing my November wrap up. I only read four books in November and they're all for university and they're all really short. <laughs> but the weird thing is I have actually been reading a lot. It's just been extracts for university so I haven't been finishing books. I've just been reading bits of lots of different things. However, I was thinking that I wanted to do a video at some point discussing the extracts I have to read because there's somewhere I've read them and thought, yep, I'm definitely going to buy this book. And then there's somewhere I've read them and just thought, no, I'm not reading any more than this. <laughs> so I thought that might be quite an interesting video if you guys are interested, so let me know in the comments if you are. But without further ado, let's talk about the books that I read in November. So the first book that I read was Foster Canite by Catherine Burdekin. This is the first If Hitler Won the War dystopia. It was published in 1937 and this is the book that George Orwell would have taken a lot of inspiration off for his book 1984. It's always compared to that book but George Orwell, you know, he'd have taken inspiration from this. So if you enjoyed his book, read this one because this is so fascinating. It's unsettling, it's unnerving, it's sickening, but because of that it is so fascinating to read. <laughs> because in this world they basically erase history and rebuild society based on the idea that Hitler is a god. Yeah. This brings all sorts of discussions in because, you know, a lot of strong opinions in this book, let me tell you. It's open to discussion about whether you can even erase history and have it so that none of the new society that you've built knows about it. Personally, I don't think it's possible because that's a lot of information to go destroying. <laughs> but because of that, it follows that sort of idea that a lot of dystopias do where knowledge is power. Yeah. found it really interesting to think about that and this book basically acted like a huge reveal because seeing how the society ended up this way was just endlessly fascinating for me because I can't quite imagine it but it seemed possible in this book. Like I said, a lot of strong opinions because, you know, Hitlerian views, Nazis, but like to the extreme because they now think that Hitler is a god. You're likely to be offended by something at some point in this book if you read this. <laughs> I'm going to leave a full list of trigger warnings for all of the books in this video down below. But if you do have any interest in this book, I would highly recommend it if you can get hold of it. Something that really threw me off, there seems to be this weird paradox where homosexuality is perfectly fine in this society because men in this world are seen as the most important thing or the only important thing they're the only thing that can be beautiful so it's just you know inevitable that people will fall in love with men because why wouldn't they but <laughs> it was just really bizarre to see because in this world homosexuality had complete acceptance it was completely fine to be homosexual that's not quite we haven't quite reached that stage in the modern world so it was really bizarre to see this world, which is so regressed and just horrible in every way possible, actually be ahead of us in that one thing? It kind of messed with my mind a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, just this book guys, this book. <laughs> the most unsettling, unnerving, sickening thing I've ever read in my life and for that very reason, also the most fascinating. And the reason why I rated it, 4.5 out of 5 stars. <laughs> I then picked up Goodbye to Blim by Christopher Isherwood, which is a kind of serialised collection of short stories. The stories are all really linked by the main character, who is also called Christopher Isherwood, which confused the hell out of me and I had to actually Google whether this was an autobiography or not. In it's not. <laughs> he just wanted to call the main characters by the same name because that's a way to be annoying. Anyway, this just follows different people in the lead up to the Second World War. But I didn't like this book, I just think it lacked a plot, it lacked any relationship between the characters, it lacked any decent dialogue. <laughs> I feel really harsh for just hating it so badly but I don't tend to like the interwar period books because a lot of the people in society just become really careless, they don't really care what's going to happen, which is the exact definition of careless, well done Ashley. <laughs> I haven't done videos in a while. <laughs> but yeah, they just don't see the point in anything, which is understandable because, you know, First World War happened, but when you're reading about it, I just 
don't care about what they're doing. They're just having parties all the time and <sighs> I don't care. <laughs> It was a quick read, but I didn't like anything other than that. So I rated this two out of five stars. <laughs> I then read Mrs. Minerva by Jen Struther, which is a column that used to be published in the Times, which was then brought together into a book because it was that popular. It just follows Mrs. Minerva and her everyday life because why not? <laughs> this was actually used to lift public morale during the war and honestly, I can see why because it's a really light-hearted way to look at life, I guess, because the character of Mrs. Miniver really appreciates the smaller things in life, which during the war is what you have to rely on because things become really quickly overwhelming if you don't take any happiness in smaller things. <laughs> Granted, I didn't like all of the stories because, you know, there's a lot of stories in here. It was kind of inevitable that I wasn't going to enjoy all of them. And some of them did just seem a bit pointless and like they weren't really worth the story, but each of them were only about three pages long, so I'm not gonna hold it against it too much. There was one story in particular that I absolutely fell in love with, which was about Christmas Day, and I don't know whether it's because we're in the run-up to December and it's getting festive, but I just... <sighs> that one caught my heart completely. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of... I found this an interesting insight into someone else's life even if it is a fictional character so I ended up rating this 3 out of 5 stars. <laughs> and lastly we have Mrs Dalloway by Virginia Woolf which follows Mrs Dalloway, she's setting up for a party and just a stream of consciousness as she goes through her day. There's not much of a plot. <laughs> because this is written as a stream of consciousness I know for a fact that I wouldn't have enjoyed it had I just tried to read it like a normal book because I did try that for the first 40 pages and I just, I wouldn't have been able to tell you what went on. However, when I switched to listening to an audiobook alongside reading it, that made all the difference. Something about having someone narrate it to you and change their tone of voice when it happened to be dialogue or when it was thoughts, it just really helped distinguish between the thoughts that were ramblings and just like on a complete tangent from anything and then when they were shocked back to reality because something reminded them of something. I feel like I'm saying the word something a lot. <laughs> Basically the audio book really really helped and I would highly recommend listening to it if you want to read this book or even if you want to retry reading it if you disliked it. I'll leave a link to the audio book that I use down in the description box but it does have a lot of adverts in it so you either need to use adblock or have a lot of patience. <laughs> But yes, I did enjoy this one again because it was an insight to someone's life, but it didn't really hold much other than that, so I rated it 3.5 out of 5 stars. <laughs> but those were all the books that I read in November. Let me know if you've read any of these books and your opinions on them. I know Mrs. Dalloway is really hit and miss in the general community for that, so I'd love to hear your opinion if you've read it. Again, let me know if you want to see that video about the extracts of books that I've read and my opinions on them so that you guys can get involved and tell me which books to read. All links to the books, their trigger warnings and my social media will be down in the description box. I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!